Talks with Liz Bailey. Our access to audio programmes are sponsored by Impact Funding Partners, the RS McDonald Charitable Trust and the Souter Charitable Trust. To find out more about how to access our services, visit qnreview.com or email aaatl at qnreview.com. This programme was produced and presented by our Access to Audio Ambassador team leader, Liz Bailey, and edited by our Recruitment Training Officer, Alistair McPhee. Hi everyone, today I'm being joined by Moira Cuthbertson, who is the manager of CJS, which stands for Community Jobs Scotland. Um, hi Moira, could you just hi there. a little about Community Jobs Scotland? Um, some people might not know what it is, so could you just tell us what Community Jobs Scotland is? Absolutely. Okay, so Community Jobs Scotland, or as we refer to it there, um, CJS, it has been going now since 2011 and it came off of the back of what we saw as a very successful Future Jobs Fund programme. Um, the Community Jobs Scotland programme is open to young people between the ages of 16 and 29 who are more disadvantaged in um, today's labour market. Um, each of the opportunities that are created for the young people are created all within Scotland's voluntary sector and that's right across Scotland. Um, these opportunities are made available and each of the opportunities will offer the young person a contract of between 12 and 18 months depending on whether or not the young person is taking up the post as a full-time post or as a part-time post and also each of these jobs as we keep referring um, are paid um, so it's not volunteering a lot of people tend to think that because it is the voluntary sector and um, that they are volunteering no these are paid jobs within within the sector so the very minimum young person will get paged, paid paid um, at the national minimum wage rate for an 18 to 20 21 year old so that's even for a 16 17 year old they would get paid at that rate although we do encourage the employers to pay the living wage um, as well so young people can get paid anything from as I said the national minimum wage up and beyond the living wage as as well well that sounds fantastic um, I believe you're in phase 10 of CJS can you tell me how things have changed since you started what what things are different now yeah, it, things have changed quite, quite, quite a bit from the beginning, but also unfortunately or fortunately um, over this last year. So since we started um, on CGS back in 2011, um, at that point, because it was still addressing the issues of the 2008 recession, um, the opportunities were available to any young person between the ages of 16 and 24. Um, and at that point, the opportunities opportunities were only available to the young people for six months. Um, and um, as the years have gone on, working with the government again, we have all obviously recognised that um, more young people were getting missed and falling through the gaps. So that's why we started to turn and um, focus more on the young people who are more disadvantaged. Um, so we're talking about young people who maybe have convictions, young people, disabled young people, um, young people who are um, from the care system. Um, so so that was more the group of young people that we were, were looking to access and to offer the opportunities to. So this has progressed and also one of the things that changed um, was the age for the young people because again it was recognised that you know for an awful lot of young people at the age of 24 upwards there were still a lot of issues and there was still a big gap there. Um, so again with the government we were able to increase the age range up to the age of 29. So this has been going on um, up until, well, up until now, but we're now in a situation where things are, are changing yet again. Um, so the, what's, what's currently happening is the Scottish Government are looking to align all of the employability programmes that are out there across Scotland, um, because a lot of people, um, when you look at the programmes that are out there, they're kind of misaligned in, in some ways, um, because for a young person, and if they're trying to access one programme, well, to, uh, take it, if we take CGS, a young person has to be unemployed. They have to um, be from one of the disadvantaged groups um, in order to access a CGS programme. So 
for a young person who maybe it doesn't have care experience background or doesn't have a disability, they wouldn't be able to access it. So what the government are trying to do is trying to align everything so that for any young person and including because they're actually looking at to have it open for any any person in Scotland who's unemployed is to have all of the opportunities and employment opportunities there to help that that person. Um, so they, they've got a, a what they're calling a funding stream called No One Left Behind that they're currently working on and what they're looking at doing is taking all of the funding that they have in terms of employability programs out there and pulling it into this stream and what they're also looking to do is to make it more localised as well um, for for well for unemployed people um, and for the programmes to be determined within the local areas which actually you know makes makes an awful lot of sense so we're going through a period over this year and next year um, whereby the CGS we're not sure if it's the programme or if it's just the funding um, we're pushing for at least very very much the programme but um, at least if not elements of the programme to be transitioned into the no one left behind funding stream. It all sounds very good, like there's lots of things happening and lots of things coming up, so that sounds fantastic. When I started working at Q&Review, Review, we actually had two people there who were on CJS jobs. Um, I wasn't on one, but, but they were on, and they've both gone on to bigger and better things. They've, they've worked in the media, um, one of them's done things in TV. Uh, we've had a number of people at Q&Review Review who've worked on um, CGS positions and then they've gone on to do really well. I mean, can you think of anyone else? Who, is there a lot of that? Do you find that a lot that people move on to bigger and better things, the experience they can gain, um, you know, sets them up for the future? Absolutely. Um, I mean, that, that's, that's the, whole, the whole idea behind um, uh, CGS is that it is, in effect, a stepping stone for, for the young people in that they're, they're moving and progressing. What, when we're setting up um, the jobs um, in the first instance, um, we go through a process with employers. So it's not just a case of employers are coming to us and say, we can create a job and we go, oh, great, you know, just start someone. We actually go through a process with them. So we're wanting to ensure that there is good work experience there for the young person and that there also is the support for them in terms of progression. Um, so that's something that we, we um, check with them employers in the first instance before we will allow a job to be advertised and for, for a young person to be recruited to that post. So we, we get quite a varied um, amount of work and, 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 and stories coming back from um, employers and from young people in terms of what's happened. I mean, I, I was um, sitting in with some young people um, through a Zoom session that we actually um, were carrying out with the government recently. And we had a young man there who um, had been working for an employer um, uh, through CGS, um, but then at the end um, of his period, obviously the, the, the employer very much appreciated the work that he had done um, and had retained him and had, had kept him on. And this was like two years ago that this had happened. So he had carried on working with them for, for this period. Um, but then he announced to us through this meeting that he's actually just started a new job where he is an associate director for a disabled persons organization. So it just goes to show, you know, exactly as you said, the progress and, progress and development for, for the young people um, that goes on. And there are obviously many more stories like mm -hmm. that as well. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic. Yeah. So during lockdown, I suppose things were a bit difficult for you. You might you must be working from home. How how did you all manage to keep things going? Yeah, <laughs> that was that was quite quite quick um, for for that to have happened. Um, I mean, to be honest, in in our team, we're quite a small team that, that run the program. There's a team of six of us, um, and at that point. Um, it was only myself that, I, well, myself and one of my colleagues actually had a laptop. Um, so very, very quickly, um, our, our organisation had to um, get laptops for for everyone, um, and that was that was done to allow, obviously, very quickly to allow us all to start working from home. Um, so yeah, we've been all working from home in, in various means and manners since <laughs> since then. Yeah. I myself was actually down in Dumfries for the first 
first three months um, where I was actually taking care of my dad. So literally I was working on my laptop on my lap um, for, for, that, <laughs> for that three month period. Um, but now I'm back at home, so much better set up at home. Um, but things were, were very strange for, for us and obviously for all the employers. We had a situation whereby um, you know, we, we needed to check to see what was happening with our employers and with, with their young employees. Um, so again, we had all sorts of situations, like ourselves, some who were working from home, some who, again, because of the very nature of the health condition they had or the condition of maybe a family member, they were having to shield. So there was a whole range of things going on there, both for the young people and for the organisations. Good thing that we had was we had an agreement with the government from the very outset that all of the young people funded through CGS would continue to get paid no matter what, what their situation was. So that was fantastic that that was able to, to be done. Um, and since then again we've all been monitoring that people have been coming back to work we've still got a situation where some um, if you want non-essential offices like ourselves um, they are still either working from home I think there's very very few young people who are now not doing some form of work um, at that at this point but one of the things that we did find out which was fantastic. Alongside our CGS jobs, we've always had an offer of um, some training and always a small budget for some training to go on. And one of the things that very rapidly was taken up um, from the outset was the training budget. So we've just about spent all of our training wow. <laughs> for, for this young for this year because young people have been taking up and have been doing a huge amount of online um, training courses over this past five, six months. Wow. Well, it all sounds fantastic. It sounds like you do great work. So, yeah, I really hope you're able to continue with it all. And, you know, CGS carries on, goes from strength to strength. Thank you very much for joining me today. Have a good day. It was absolutely my pleasure, Liz. <laughs> Thank you very much. Q Talks with Liz Bailey. Our access to audio programmes are sponsored by Impact Funding Partners, the RS McDonald Charitable Trust and the Souter Charitable Trust. To find out more about how to access our services, visit qunreview.com or email aaatl at qunreview.com. This programme was produced and presented by our Access to Audio Ambassador team leader, Liz Bailey, and edited by our Recruitment Training Officer, Alistair McPhee.